Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage. Today's clip was shot back in March of 2019. It was our good friend Steve Cropper, one of our early backstage shows, intended mainly just to be seen here in Nashville on Channel 5. We had a half hour time slot, so we had to edit out certain things to, to be able to fit the time requirement. This was the clip that we edited out. We hadn't been seen. Some of it has. We had to kind of put a little bit extra with it to make it work. But Cropper talks about the first time he met John Belushi and then how that kind of morphed into the uh, Blues Brothers thing and, and how they actually included Soul Man into the movie. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Once again, Steve Cropper. This buddy of mine, two guitar players, not bad. We used to learn a lot of the current songs and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. So a friend heard us and said, I have a DJ friend. I want, you, I want him to hear you guys. I'm going to take you down one night when he says it's okay. So he called us that afternoon and said, we're going down there tonight to this radio station. And uh, the guy's name was Keith Sheriff. He worked at the old, they had a, uh, a radio station in the old Rushwood Park baseball stadium. And we went up there and he said, they had a little bitty studio out there. He said, just go out there and plug up and start playing. I can hear you in here. And he said, I'll just turn the mic on and listen to you guys. Mm -hmm. What he did was, he put us on the air. He liked us. He said, can you do that song again? He just hit a switch, put us on the air, and the phones lit up, you know. He said, is this all you guys have got? And so we went around trying to find a drummer. He said, if you had a bass player or a drummer, I'd put you on one of my sock hops. And he did these Friday night sock hops. And uh, so we went all over the school. And finally we, we did, we found a drummer, got on a sock hop, and then I don't know how we did it. The thing is that we listened to the radio constantly. So when I look back on it, we listened more to commercial music because most of the stuff we listened to was already on the charts and already hits. That's what the kids across the country are listening to. And in those days, I think American Bandstand was just really getting its TV legs, basically with Dick Clark and everything. And we couldn't wait to get home and turn on Dick Clark to see what the kids were dancing to and all that. And uh, today's different because of the cell phone. They hear something they like instantly within less than a minute or two. They let their buddies know what I just heard. This is great. Or I heard some great band last night. Listen to this and they'll hold their phone up and they get to hear it live. In those days, you hear something good in a, in a record shop or you hear the flip side of a record you hadn't heard before and you want to share it with people. It might take weeks to get that done. And that in those days, uh, for those historical nuts that are out there, uh, each college sort of had its own dance because they didn't have any communication. They didn't go from one college to another. Nowadays, they'll take a picture of somebody dancing and they get it instantly. So mm -hmm. everybody follows that, that yeah. train of thought or that style or whatever. In those days, they didn't. So you had all these different dances. And uh, I don't know what they're doing today. It's all a spinoff of what we were doing back in the late 50s, early 60s. It's still the same kind of movements, but a little bit different. I don't know that you could even imagine the impact that it had on your life but when you're doing soul man it was it sam it said, sam said it, yeah. sam play play it steve have you ever thought what that how things may be better different or worse if he had not said that well it was good that he did he's probably not very happy that he said it but anyway he did anyway and uh he only said it that one time, and I, I don't even remember how many takes we did. About a third or fourth take, he did it. And that's, he did it in that take and that take only, and we kept it. And then it kind of became Except part the of right the one, part of the deal. Yeah, which is part of the fusion of the the stacks phenomenon. And uh, so, phenomenal, great, iconic record, iconic guitar riffs that you came up with there. Um, then. You know, you think that the songs had a longevity that's unbelievable, and then all of a sudden you got the Blues Brothers. I mean, in brief, how did that come about, and how did you? How did they let well, you know? Well, you know, there again, just being in the right place at the right time, being lucky. It, I got a phone call from John Belushi, and he was in New York. You didn't know him? At all. No, I had met him. He didn't know me, but I had met him. I met him at a Paul McCartney party, and he was. Uh, Paul hired him to do that imitation of Joe Cocker that he was real good at. Mm -hmm. And he had done it that night and he was outside smoking a cigarette and I walked up and introduced myself. And he didn't know me from Adam. So when he called me, he didn't even remember that. I'd, I talked to him about it later and he said, I remember being to the party. Okay, that was a party in LA. And that's where I first met John Belushi. Well, he had to talk to uh, Phil Walden 
who was Otis's manager, to ask about me. And he said, you know, I'm putting a band together. And, I, you know, he said, I've been hearing a lot about this guy named Steve Carpenter. He said, great. And he said, he didn't have long hair, does he? And Phil <laughs> said, well, yeah, he does. He said, oh, that guy's not a guitar player. He's a roadie. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Much the way I thought about Otis when the first time I saw him, I thought he was a roadie because he came up driving a car. Right. I just thought he was a valet or, you know, whatever you call a roadie. And uh, anyway, they finally convinced him. And he, one of his opening things was he says, I understand you don't get along with Duck Dunn too well. He just said it as a joke. He oh. knew better. Oh. So that, and I knew it too. And we both started laughing. But the first time he called me in the studio, I was in the middle of mixing, and I had given the girls instructions up front. If I'm mixing, don't give me any phone calls. Just take the numbers down and give it to me when I get through. And she thought, because it was John Belushi, that it was okay. And I thought, I said, there's only one guy that, it, that was in L.A., that if he calls, let him back through. But he'd always say, hey, this is Stevie Wonder, or hey, this is President so-and-so, or hey, this so on. They said, Cropper. John Belushi. I just hung up on him. <laughs> but two seconds later, the phone rings again. No, it's John Belushi. Really, don't hang up. Don't hang up. So I thought it was my friend Alan wanting to take me to lunch because uh, I didn't have time. But it wasn't. It was actually John Belushi. So what had a bigger impact? Uh, or was the original Soul Man or the Blues Brothers? Well, I don't know. On your life? Well, probably the original, I would think. And uh, I had the idea because... What they wanted to do probably would have made it anyway, I don't know. But it was basically all slow, kind of medium tempo blues songs. Nothing wrong with blues songs. But there was nothing in there commercial to dance to. So at the end of the rehearsal one day, I said, John, why don't you do something you can dance to? And he goes, like what? And I said, well, like Sam and Dave. He said, well, I don't know any of their songs. And I looked at Paul Schaefer and I said, you remember Soul Man? And I just hit it. And they started dancing, going crazy and singing. So when they get through with it, everybody's laughing and having a big time because <laughs> Ackroyd comes out there doing his crazy leg stuff. And uh, he turns around to me, John does, he said, Steve, I love that song, but it's too high for me. I can't sing it. I just dropped it down. And I've been, we've been playing it there ever since. I thought everybody knew Soul Man. Well, everybody might, but they don't know it in the key. We do it. 